Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Funbox Monster Podcast. My name is Tristan, and I am joined, as ever, by... Matt Awkward. Matt Awkward. Hi. Hey, how's it going today? Fantastic, because we are doing one of my all-time favorites that uh, you didn't seem to be as keen on as <laughs> I have been. Okay, so this is this is a funny one. There's a point counterpoint here. I I hope I hope the, there definitely is going to be a point counterpoint <clears throat> as far as like me because my first viewing of this movie because I didn't watch it first before I started taking notes. I watched it while I was taking notes and I ruined the movie, I think. Well, let's I think, tell the people what the movie the is. The movie the movie is American Scream from, from 1988. 88. Yes. And Which has been a favorite of mine since renting it probably in, I'd say, 97. So I've loved this movie for a good, like, 25 years or so. Yeah, so I, I didn't I didn't get the full experience of it, and it severely made me angry while I was watching it. Like, I was... <laughs> I was. You were texting me being like, is my copy broken? Is this edited out of order? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> but nothing made sense. And no, it doesn't. when you actually... Because it's a movie that this movie is so troll two esque. Mm-hmm. Like once I realized that that was what happened, once I got through the whole movie, I watched it a second time, just knowing that I was watching a troll two, And I loved it. Awesome. Like it was really, it was an enjoyable thing, but trying to make this make logical sense in oh, a good linear luck. fashion. Good luck. There's well, that's the thing with this movie is it, it, it comes mm-hmm. up with a crazy idea but without any meat to it. It's just like, oh, this craziness is happening. Okay, why? Ah, who cares? <laughs> right. But it, yes, exactly. And I think the problem, uh, it's hard to explain why it doesn't work right. Because it's not like, it's not like oh, it's like, it's dreamlike or dream logic or whatever. Yeah. It's just scenes where something will happen and then they will react to the events that are going on in exactly the wrong way. They'll edit to a scene where they're somewhere else and you're just like, oh, oh, they just didn't have that footage. <laughs> the I listened to the commentary because I have the blue for this. And I would I was, like to borrow that and hear that myself. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a fun it's a fun little commentary, mm-hmm. but it was it was interesting because they never addressed any of the continuity errors. They never addressed any of the problems with the script and any of the other stuff. And they just kind of like talked about it, which is fine. But for my purposes, I learned nothing. The one thing I did learn was that they they shot this thing two to one. And so they literally they had less than twice as much well, I, I, footage shot as well, they used. What do you mean two to one? So basically at maximum two takes uh like basically they had four hours of footage or whatever like this this thing was tight like they had probably six reels oh okay tops like, like this thing like was not shot. a lot of wiggle room yeah saying. yeah like no okay. wiggle room at all they only bought twice as much film as they needed to mm-hmm. shoot the movie so they shot gotcha. two times as much footage as they used okay is what i'm saying holy shit that's it oh that's insane like that's legitimately <laughs> insane. And once I heard that, I was like, "Oh, okay." He wrote it over his honeymoon, you know. Like, I'm sure, she loved that. They had. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure she was super stoked. Um, they had. Wait, honey, not right now. <laughs> I'm writing the scene where the baby explodes in the car after breastfeeding. <laughs> explodes. They smash it to death. Yeah. On the- <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's not let's not spoil the best. It smashes scene the- and explodes. Oh my god. Those words are synonymous. It's a good thing that looked like fucking water. uh, Yeah, like uh, (laughs) strawberry quick when that hit the windshield. Otherwise, that would be a very offensive scene. Uh, Even to me, who doesn't really care for children, I certainly don't want to see them (laughs) smashed on somebody's dashboard. Man, that was brutal. Uh, I mean, would be brutal again. The guy needed some too, and she was not being nice to him. I've got to say that... (laughs) Imagine defending that. <laughs> no, uh, I just. How I did sim- your baby die? I wanted to suck my wife's boob, and she was trying to feed the baby, and I was driving. Oh, and, uh, we got into a little wrestling match. Okay, hold on. Are you sh- are you sure that's what happened? I don't. I'm <laughs> okay. not sure of anything. <laughs> yes. Have you seen this movie? I sure have. <laughs> I sure have. 
And uh, yeah, I'm sorry that that I want to keep this now. I was going to give this to yeah. Matt, and then I watched it again, and I was like, oh, you know what? That's I'm fine. A, I it, they've got it at bull moves. I'm going to watch this up. terrible yep. thing again. All right, let's let's just get into it because this thing is so full of nonsense that it's going to take. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> I'm very excited about this. Okay, so all right, love the theme. Really like you know, it sounds like Law and Order kind of music with like an arpeggiator yeah. and a bass. It's great. Um, so, but we we get this wonderful. This actress is awesome. She's her oh, yeah. her like harpy mom thing yep. is like on both. Point. The parents are great. Yeah. Oh my god, that dude. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a shock that this guy never got a sitcom. Yeah, that dude is like he's definitely he's he's got that Jim Carrey, Matt yeah. Frewer, uh, uh, Pons Mar. He was uh he was the lead Wheeler in Return to Oz. That's yeah, he's an amazing actor, and and he was Theodore he's super Rex. annoying in this. Yeah, <laughs> he was in the Theodore Rex suit. That's amazing. That movie is amazing. <laughs> he loves cookies. <laughs> it's the best. The movie that Whoopi Goldberg sued to get out of yeah. and lost. Yep. <laughs> Uh, yes. Okay. So oh, this, shit. Whoop. You in the dino pit. <laughs> oh, shit. You got to be in this horrible thing. <laughs> I love that movie. People love dinosaurs and they love cop movies. How can this ever go wrong? Um, okay. Y'all, if you haven't seen Theodore Rex forever though, and you just remember I being not. Stu- just watch it. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> I don't remember anything about it other than I remember that it looked like it was a sequel to the Mario Brothers movie. Oh uh, yeah. I can see that. And I think they did reuse props from Theodore Rex uh, one way or the other. They they reused props from the TV show Dinosaurs. That makes sense. Yeah. That certainly makes sense. <laughs> um, okay. All right. So, tiny suburban mom outside screaming at her teenage son <laughs> to wake up. Absolutely the best way possible. She is out by her car screaming at her house <laughs> while her son has a closed window yeah. in his bedroom sleeping. The neighbors <laughs> love it when she does that. Um, so dad tries to touch mom in another scene right afterwards. <laughs> oh, I just did my hair. No. Yeah. So we, we get this sort of established that mom and dad are really square and really kind of in a weird relationship and, uh, they're dorks. They're dorks. <laughs> they're, they're dorks. And they live a sexless life and they're total, total dorks. Um, Right then, the uh, Larry, our secondary protagonist, shows up. He's the Eddie Haskell type best friend from like the Leave It to Beaver best friend. He's just kind of this like impish, oh, Mrs. B, you know that kind of guy. But he's also mischievous. He he grabs the mail. He steals, he steals uh, Brent's some... report card so his parents don't see it. Is that what happened? That's Man. what happened. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> he pockets that and delivers the mail like he's all. Friendly. Got your yep. mail, Mr. Benzinger. <laughs> he kind of makes a weird pass at the mom. Yeah. There was a little, little moment of that, but that was fine. Uh, he, he then... He carries a switchblade. He carries... A he, butterfly he knife. carries a butterfly knife. why not? Yeah, he goes inside and uh, some shenanigans go on on the stairs with the sister where her underwear is visible and he looks at it and she's like, oh, you're such a creep, blah, blah, blah. Just a big, crazy clusterfuck in the house. Um, And he makes some come-ons to the friend and, you know, same old, same old. Oh, Larry. Oh, Larry. He gets up to the, he gets up to Brent's room, our our main protagonist, and uh, he's looking through a telescope and he's peeping in on someone named Mrs. Gleason. (laughs) And this was just another excuse to get boobs. Oh, total excuse to get boobs. Which... This is Gleason sleeps with a mailman every day, and I watch through this telescope, and this affects the plot. No way. Well, it it establishes that he has a telescope, which is the... (laughs) Why does he even pack that? There was no reason. I mean, he could... That's right, because he uses it later on. He uses it later on to see the the person chasing the woman through the woods, but you could have looked out your window and seen that. Yeah. It didn't need to be that far away. <laughs> that plot point is completely unnecessary. It should have been binoculars. It should have been binoculars. Yeah. It's so much easier. You don't use it. Dude, they, try to look at it. They probably had a telescope, and that was it. They didn't have <laughs> binoculars. I mean... This girl's across the street from him. This movie... Would, would a telescope be too powerful for that? No, no, no. no not you, that one, certainly. You, no, no. Okay. No. Um, And this thing... So... 
this thing was made with the money that was left over from making that Magic Castle movie that he made before this. Oh yeah, I'm, it's I'm, called. I think it's called Night in the Magic Castle. I've never even heard of it. Yeah, so I didn't the, think this guy did anything else. Oh, he didn't do it. Sorry, the producer. Oh, had extra money left over, and he was like, "Hey, you want to make a horror movie?" And he was like, "How much you got?" <laughs> and he's like, "A hundred thousand dollars." And <laughs> I think they scrounged up an extra hundred thousand and did it just for for this video company. Um, and so it's understandable that this thing is low, a little, a little tight. Yeah, it looks places. good though for its budget. That is shot well. One of the things that is absolutely stand out is that the lighting is killer, yep. that the shots look beautiful, yep. especially in this restored version. You look at it, and he even says it about himself in the commentary. He's like, this looks like a modern movie, and he's right. It does. Like It, it could look like anything else yep. out there that was done with massively better equipment. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to I gotta go. I got to go pick up that blue, because I've seen this movie a hundred <laughs> times, but again, only on tape throughout the years that I've had forever. Yeah, weird. But okay, so we get get naked porn star lady uh in front of the window. It's not important, but it is interesting how out of his league the that lady is. It's also interesting that Brent is in my opinion way less interesting than Larry for being the main protagonist. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like I'm much I'm much more interested. I like Larry's character much better, the friend. Yeah, but I mean that's that's. But kind you need of that the, straight man to play right, off of. Right, exactly. Yeah. I think it makes more sense to have the main character be the straight man. Yeah. Than to have because here's the thing about Larry as well. I don't know what's going on with his character, but we do not know if he's a psychopath. If he's uh, like he behaves so bizarrely, like in this movie that I don't know <laughs> if it's like part of the plot that he's crazy and dangerous. You, or if he, it's not. He's a guy where if you were with a group of people and somebody accidentally died, he'd help you cover it up and, and hide oh, the body. Oh, absolutely he would. He 100% <laughs> would. He's that he'd, guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he'd also probably be the one that killed them, too. So that's the problem. He's also that guy. <laughs> he's Look, he's oh, every... <laughs> oopsie poopsies happen, okay? Yeah, they sure do. <laughs> Especially with Larry around. Um, so, yes. He... Uh, the family takes off. They lose a piece of luggage. It's a pretty great shot. It's a great shot. I, I'm, it's, I'm bummed that that never comes into play. Like, yeah. there's nothing that they need that they're missing later on. Nobody references this whole suitcase that fell off the truck and exploded in the street. Right. What I love about it is that they kind of hit this. It's It's got to be intentional. I, I would imagine that the pitch that they started out with was, what about vacation as a horror movie? Mm-hmm. Like, what if we did, what if we redid National Lampoon's Vacation and we did it as a horror movie? And because it, it, it hits a lot of beats of, of vacation, like yep. that, the, the luggage falling off the back, those kind of things, the people in the car, the sing along and all that kind of shit. And it's, it kind of works, especially because like they take off and the music starts and you get like a rock anthem theme. Yep. It's basically a uh, holiday, holiday road by uh, what's his fuck. Yeah. yeah, it's it's basically that. Thing. Oh, neat. So it, it, to me, that's that's kind of what they were going for. And then it goes into Looney Land yeah. very quickly. Uh, okay. Oh, and also the song. I don't know what the lyrics were, but it sounded so much like every time we're making love, it's Halloween. I was like, <laughs> huh, that's a great lyric. I got to add that to my Halloween mixtape. It doesn't make any sense at <laughs> all, but I love it. Um so they see a hitchhiker and ask, what kind of clown would be out here in the middle of nowhere? And then it turns out he's a clown. There's a clown out there. It's been, it's been one of my favorite parts for years. <laughs> it's pretty Just good. Just the random clown with a sign that says, what, due east, I think he says. Something. And they then, drive past him, and then he turns around, and the sign just says, the joke's yo. on you. Oh, that's right. And it's so cryptic. Cryptic. I love it. Because it's, he's, and he's, he's our, he's our doomsayer. Yeah. The clown is the doomsayer for this He's slasher. in it for all of... This movie has an immaculate painted cover. Like... <laughs> yes. Uh, and, and, and the clown's in it. Way in the background, very small if you look. <laughs> that clown's painted into the cover, despite being in the movie for all of, what, a literal five-second screen time? Uh, how much better would it have been if he had been in the movie? And he'd I just been a part would. of the town? Yeah. 
It's like, oh, you know, there's all these roles in the town. We've got the preacher from the 1700s. Yep. We've got this guy and this guy. And obviously we have our clown. It would have been great if he was there and they never reference it. He's just sitting at the diner and nobody nobody cares. Absolutely. Like he's, he's just, just treated as a background just character. Yeah. always there and nobody ever mentions it. It's. I mean, they got the clown suit. He's all in makeup. Like, do something with keep, that. Keep using it. Nope. Uh, nope. <laughs> sorry. Uh, the parents humiliate their kids with a sing-along <laughs> and everybody's feeling... Sorry for themselves. Uh, and then we get the scene the we scene. just discussed. The scene. The scene that this movie, it is just bizarre that this movie doesn't have like an X rating from that era because yeah. of this scene. It is so insane. There is a woman breastfeeding a baby in a car. Again, it's a baby doll, so it's super rubbery. You know it's not, there's no attempt to make it I don't it think real. this movie was rated. That would make sense. Uh, but it is. I could be wrong, but I don't. I don't think it. I don't remember seeing a rating on the. That would box. make sense because this scene yep. would probably would never have passed the eighties <laughs> MPAA. Um, but <laughs> so, I guess you seem to have explained it to me earlier. Well, she just pulls her boobs out, and dude's like obsessed, and then it looks like he's trying. She's to... trying to breastfeed the baby. Yeah, maybe. but dude won't stop his gropey gropes. Right, he's trying to suck on her boobs. I think so. While driving the car. While driving the car. And she's not having any part of it. So they oh, get, is, oh, okay. I thought she was into it. I she's like tell. struggling. I think he's struggling. I, I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> but either way, they get into this giant tussle with the baby. Of the, it's a great scene. They they get in the tussle with the baby. Uh, and the kids are all watching this from the car being like, um, dad, dad, uh, <laughs> watching this unfold until... It's a free for all, like playing tug of war with the fucking baby spraying blood all over the inside of their windshield while driving, and then the car just blows past them. And the, so this is the first. This is the first of, and it's like what? the kids seeing <laughs> massive, massive felonies, crimes against humanity committed yeah. in front of them, and them going, "Dad, ah, forget about yeah, forget it." it. Oh, they drove away. Okay. They they <laughs> forget about these things really quick. And Wouldn't late- you be like, we need to go to the police station. We need to go right, to the police station right, right now. Right now. I'm Absolutely. gonna try to take down the license plate number because this yeah, yeah. is fucked. No, they don't. They're just no, like none of no. that. <laughs> and also, I mean, there's so much about that scene that's insane. But later on, they eat the baby. Yeah. Do they? Yes, they absolutely do. Do they? Oh, don't even start with me. Don't even start. They absolutely <laughs> do. 100% they eat that baby later on. That baby could have been sleeping in the car. They could have been eating chicken bones. There was like a gallon of blood pouring out of the, <laughs> out of the fucking car door when they got there. There's no way in hell. Uh, okay. <laughs> Do they? Sure, sure. They, they, <laughs> okay, they eat chicken after killing the baby in front of a barbecue for no reason. Perfect. And, yeah. Yeah, they eat the baby. They eat the baby. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Uh, they've since the family is now over this minor trauma. Uh, mom gets out of the car and she's literally weeping over how beautiful this this Americana campsite is. How lucky they are to live in America. Question: Is that why she's weeping? Yes, because they're they're going there to drop their kids off for goodsies. Okay, so I'm wondering if she's crying at the thought of what she's going to be doing. Is okay. Is that true? If that is true, that is actually a better version of this movie. It does to me, answer that's what, some questions. To me, that's what I've always thought. Because m- later on when Buck Flower gives him, or, the, or they get the pam- pamphlet, when he makes him open it, you know what I mean? It's like a great, like, great place to bring your kids. And he opens it to forget all your troubles. Like, my yes. thoughts, they bring this, <laughs> these family gums here, drops their kids off. The, the all-adult town kills the right, kids. sure. And then they get to go home and be like, we're kid-free because kids suck. Yay. I, okay, so that was another part of this. Like, they were so... They have this pamphlet, and it says, a great place to bring your kids. Yeah. And forget about your worries, or whatever it says in yeah. the middle. So what? They, why didn't it say, a great place to drop your kids off and then go home forever. without your kids and yeah. kill them and whatever? Or, like, a it's great like, place th- to bring your kids and leave them forever. It's like... like it's v- vaguely different than the it's beginning vague, of that but... fucking Frank Zappa movie where it's like <laughs> a great place to bring your kids up or whatever. But forever, I've always assumed that that's what this is. That's it's this weird ass like town where you can leave kids because you don't like them anymore. 
I, it doesn't make sense. I mean, I guess I, you know what? Maybe that's. I mean, it makes sense, but it doesn't. Like it, like it makes sense, but it wouldn't happen. <laughs> sure. I mean, I th- there's so much that needed to be explained about all. And then of because that. that's what happens later on during the um, Buck Flower telling him what happened. They killed my wife and my and my kids and my dog. They think I don't remember what I do. Like, I think he was trying to. The dog was like seventy years old in dog years, so that's unforgivable. I think I I think he was trying to live there with his kids, and they made sure that wouldn't happen, and they killed yeah. the kids, like because there was no kids allowed in that place. The wife wasn't a kid. Mm, she got in the way. The dog wasn't a kid. Come got on. in the way. <sighs> okay. Anyway, this is this is so confusing. This is going to be literally our worst episode that we've ever done. This <laughs> makes no sense. I don't know how to talk about anything that's going on here. Uh, okay, and also all the things that I'm talking about are horrible. <laughs> Thanks so, for tuning in to the worst episode of the Funbox Monster Podcast if this is ever. Your, if this is your first episode, maybe go back to a better one. <laughs> I'm just saying. Ignore Shocking Dark. <laughs> I think I think Shocking Dark aged out because I forgot to allow the thing to. Uh, oh, thank heavens! Yeah, so I I think you're I think you're off the you're off the hook for your drunk ass episode where you, you drank too much whiskey before you were, zooming in. You were drinking in the sun while setting up a pool. Yes, <laughs> not not my not my best idea. <laughs> Uh, I liked it. <laughs> Pretty funny. Uh, all the fucking Zoom episodes sound like shit anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay. We see Buck Flower in this diner that they've pulled up to, and uh, he can't get ham and eggs because he's got high cholesterol. He already and, uh, had his cholesterol for that week. Apparently. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the family sits down and orders coffees, but the waitress won't let the kids have coffee. Because they're too young. Despite being... Like 19 or 20. Yeah. 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 Uh, The waitress intentionally spills coffee on the mom. Why? To get them out of the picture. No, it feels like it's going to keep them there longer, but okay. (laughs) To Uh, get them to go to the bathroom to clean off. Why? So so Buckflower can smell the hair of the girl. Oh, right. That that opens up the the booth so that Buckflower can go smell her hair. Important plot point that is a thing that happens i'm just gonna skip over this because i don't even know there's amazing there is an amazing scene where like we get close-ups of the waffles and they're covered in blood and they're like eating bloody waffles (laughs) painting the painting the window display with blood it's pretty funny it's a cool scene yeah i did like that but buckflower does sit down once mom's gone and sniffs the teenage girl's hair yeah he just gets up from his booth walks over touches her hair sniffs it walks back to his booth and just sits down and nobody says a word nope everybody's just like <laughs> everybody in the family's just like yeah okay that's, that's fine uh so the family car won't start when they try to get out so naturally dad just lays on the horn and hopes somebody's <laughs> gonna assist him Pretty good. This, of course, drives Buckflower crazy because he's got a plate in his head. He doesn't like noise, and he does not like noise. It bothers the it bothers the plate in his head for some reason. I don't know why that is. Um, he got the plate in his head from an auto accident, but we find out later that's a lie. It is a lie. Uh, he just hangs around. Uh, George Flower just kind of hangs around with his dog Blue, who is a stuffed dead dog. Yeah. It is his old dog. Is that dog. a real stuffed dead dog? Yeah, that dog? is one hundred percent a real stuffed dead dog. Okay, that's what I thought. Because it looks too shitty to be anything else. Yeah, well, it looks too real to be well, that too. fake with this movie's budget. I, yeah, I yeah. felt. Yeah, no, they just somebody found a, a stuffed dead dog <laughs> and used it. I wonder if that was found at like a thrift shop or, or antique store. I'm sure that was just a, a plot point that they added because they had it. And they're just like, "Fuck, we gotta put this in." Yeah, there. yeah. I mean, we already used my Uncle Bob's clown suit. We got, we gotta <laughs> use a dead dog too. That's what they were doing. I mean, they were using, they're using every part of the animal mm-hmm. on this thing. So they're just doing their best <laughs> with what they got. And I mean, they made a movie for nothing with a a huge cast and like all sorts of weird shit going on. Kudos to them for what yeah. they what they accomplished. On such a tight budget, but I wish it made sense. That's really all. I just wish this thing made sense. Okay, so uh, George Flower goes crazy, tries to fight the dad, and uh, it's a pretty fun scene. It, 
Yeah, it is. That actually is pretty good. You know, as a as a physical comedian. Yes, that's what I mean. Buck yeah. Flowers great, and so is the and dad. so is Pons Mar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and now the uh, now we're introduced to the sheriff who shows up and Sheriff Sam. He breaks it up. He's like, "Hey, everybody, come on, everybody, calm down. Things are gonna be okay. <laughs> I'm here." And uh, then he makes faces like he's totally in on the whole thing because he is. Oh yeah, big time. Uh, he tells the whole family the deal with the town, sort of, uh, but not the not the evil part of the deal. <laughs> um, and so we uh, we just leave that scene with nothing happening, right? Yeah. <laughs> Again, <laughs> so many scenes where you just leave, and nothing happens. Uh, the uh, the troubled teen son smokes a cigarette and plays his electric guitar, so that's true. <laughs> he's uh, he's fun. It totally. It's totally a rip off Back to the Future in this with his guitar solo later on. I love it because in the commentary, the guy's like, I, when I watched the, when I did this, I thought I was being original and did not know anything. Of, I did not remember that I was ripping off. Oh my uh, gosh. So he admitted to seeing it, but. Admitted oh to yeah, like he, not, knew, he knew that he saw didn't it. He realized that he, he did. Was excite, yeah. He was like, when he watched it, he was like, oh man, I'm excited to tell people that like they ripped me off for this because that was like my scene. And then he was like, oh, and then I found out that uh, Back to the Future was like two years earlier. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, because, or five years earlier, four years earlier. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, dude. It, <laughs> did you really think that was you? <laughs> of course he did. Uh, Dad loses his keys, but he's got a metal detector. and he Because he, some, of course he does. Of course he does. Because, like I said, they're dorks. They're dorks. Larry goes crazy for a second. There's this this weird scene where he, I don't remember what really happened. He they start getting into kind of like a little a little like play fight or something, and then Larry pulls out his knife and it's puts o- it to Brent's throat. It's as over. A it's joke. over. It's over the bed when they go to pick their bed at the cabin. Right. So yes. he's like, "Come on, I saw the bed first. And he's like, "Move your stuff." Then he pulls out the thing, does this whole. Don't fucking move, motherfucker. I'll cut you so fast, motherfucker. Yep. And it's like, whoa. <laughs> yep, yep. Larry went totally psycho. And he's like, ah, he's... just kidding. And it's like, no, you are a total psycho. <laughs> oh, and your friends joke and put like a blade right against your neck. That is one of the funniest jokes going. <laughs> one of them. Uh, so, Brett brought his telescope, guys. Huh? huh? Yeah. And so uh, Larry uses it and randomly sees a bloody woman being chased by a guy that looks like Blackie Lawless, and Brent won't believe him. Uh, parents play charades for a second, I guess, just to get another <laughs> I moment. I love it. I Fun's mean, Martin. This he, <laughs> he he does a pratfall there that is yeah. that is classic. I, He's I, awesome. I, I was very impressed. Uh, the scene makes no sense, but who can't? <laughs> oh yeah, that's a that's a shock. Okay, yeah, I gotta stop saying the scenes don't make sense. <laughs> but the girls have a one of the girls has a hallucination about Buck Flower. I, again, there's a moment where they see Buck Flower and then she wakes up or shakes it off. And she's like, "Oh, oh, it wasn't." Yeah. So I Was never it a scene that didn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> I never know what's a dream in this thing. Nothing is. Nothing. That's not possible. Yeah, it is. Uh, the. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the family goes to this bizarre, like barn dance kind of thing. Hoot yeah, it's like, a, it's like a polka. The, oh, this dance. one was that's right. the The second one was a was a country western yes. hoot nanny. The first one is a polka party where yeah. everybody's. Wor- How did they get so much fucking leader in on their budget? There's like fucking <laughs> ten people wearing leader in. They must have known people who owned it. Oh yeah, I mean, Crazy. there's places that that's the employee uniforms. <laughs> they, they probably just had the all the employee uniforms for like the ski lodge restaurant thing. Super weird. So everybody gets offered punch except the children. They can only have hot chocolate. <laughs> it's another another weird moment, uh, and some local hillbilly band plays polka songs and. The fiddle player looks exactly like fucking Donald Trump Jr., which is really weird. I didn't uh, notice that, but I'm going to try not to in the future. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the kids say something weird is going on in this town. Yeah. Good call. Uh, after witnessing an infanticide and a molesty maniac with a stuffed dead dog <laughs> and a killer stalking a woman through the woods, 
they're getting a little suspicious. Hmm. So uh, Sheriff invites the girls to dance, the underage 16-year-old girls to dance. And no kids, no rules, man. That's, that's how this town works. It is true. Uh, and so they go off. It's the sheriff and his friend or his deputy or sure. something. Who knows? Uh, but they go off with them, and uh, the dudes are having a hard time finding ladies in this town. Because they're the only kids in town. Cause the, I mean, well, then fucking go after the like somebody who's slightly, you know, 30 years old or something. Come on. You, you wouldn't. They're like 16. You don't have the confidence to do that at 16. <laughs> <laughs> this kid does. He smokes. He plays electric guitar. Yeah. That guy could do anything. He's a pushover. He he absolutely is a pushover. Yeah. Uh, Larry's so, the badass. <laughs> that's true. Larry is a badass. Um, so, but Brent needs to go hit the head <laughs> in an awesome scene. He goes into the bathroom to yeah, use the urinal. Go for it. And this other, this other town resident just walks in right after him. And just stares right at his junk. Well, yeah, he stands at the stands, stands at, the, at the stall, right next uh, <laughs> urinal, right next to him, and just stares down. Yeah, which and, obviously gives Brent stage fright, as it would with anybody. <laughs> and so he's like, "Okay," and he goes to the bathroom <laughs> stall, to the actual toilet stall that has a closing <laughs> door, and the guy follows him yeah. and just stands <laughs> right behind him while he's trying to use the bathroom. And he's like, and the scene where he just pokes over the thing to look at him is so great. Yes, really good. <laughs> and he does he even attack Brent first, or does Larry attack this guy before it, any of that happens? It happens almost simultaneously. Like Larry goes to check on Brent when he hasn't been there for a while, and he walks in, and as that guy that guy finally opens up the stall and goes to attack, yeah, Brent. But Larry jumps on him like within a second, so it all kind of happens. Like I was wondering that too. I was like, I feel like did- there's a reading of this movie where Larry has incited every single violent <laughs> incident. <laughs> because no, I I honestly contemplated that watching this, being like, how did Larry know he was attacking him? Because it happened so fast. But like, if you do watch it, yeah, that guy that guy goes to attack Brent, but before he can even do anything, Larry's in there like, Pfft. okay. So, but good he- point. Okay, so here, think about this. Uh. Larry is the only one who sees the person chasing the woman through the through the woods. Mm-hmm. Larry finds the person tied up in the shower, finds them in air quotes. Yep. Maybe Larry put her there. Larry has killed everyone in this movie. Fuck. Yep. This is deep reading of Super this movie. Super fuck. <laughs> yeah. It's this, so true though. I think it is. <laughs> I think it might be. He oh, no. starts everything. Not the, not the cutoff head, not the shotgun. The girl kills the guy with the shotgun later on. Oh, I mean that's once they're once they've all once Larry has used his Svengali like powers to convince <laughs> them that the town is out to get them. Of course, they go on a killing spree for him with his Charles Manson like abilities. Buck, Buck Flower cut off the head of the guy though when he was about to attack them outside the strip club. That was totally not Larry. That's true, but that was that could be a completely unrelated incident where Buck Flower saved their lives, and that's it. Yep. Oh my God, this movie's weird. <laughs> um, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, the guy in later who's an attacks attacks Brent. Larry jumps on his back, and uh, Larry nearly gets choked to death. The guy has his hands around his neck and pushes him under the stall so that Brett can see Larry's face while he's being choked. Yeah. And uh, Brett makes the great decision to grab the the back of the toilet seat or the whatever you call that. Yeah, the, it's a, you know, the thing you lift up to do an upper decker. <laughs> yes, that common thing that we all do all the time. <laughs> Uh, but yes, the back of the toilet takes it off. <laughs> it turns into styrofoam once he gets up over the top. It's clearly just a sheet of styrofoam when he actually hits the guy. Not in the if head. you watch it on tape. Isn't that great? Mm-hmm. That's one of the one of the wonderful benefits of VHS is that you'll never know. That I've, I've never noticed that. Yeah, it's so clear that it's yeah. just a sheet of styrofoam <laughs> in the Blu-ray. Neat. Uh, and even the director's like, "Why the fuck didn't I like? Why didn't I shoot it?" So that I was, so that it cut right then. Why didn't he bring the actual back of the toilet yep. over the stall? Instead, we had him bring the piece of styrofoam over the stall and <laughs> did it as a continuous, <laughs> and it makes no sense. Uh, yeah, he was super mad, but he was well, like, "Yeah, they kill a guy. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah, he was he was like, yeah, we did this at four in the morning, so who fucking cares? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, so do they or don't they? I mean, we don't know that they kill him. I feel he, like Larry makes a comment about how they did the earlier on. Yeah. Remember when Brett's like, do you think that guy's okay? Like, I, I think... I think there was more to his injury than we actually saw, like, that was supposed to happen. Like, because they mentioned that his, the side of his head was caved in. Uh, Larry says that. Like, They did I, not have a huge effects budget. No, so, so I'm sure there should have been, yeah, uh, like, a caved in head where it's like, oh, they killed a guy. <laughs> I mean, if they had just done something where, like, there was so much blood, mm-hmm. like, if we'd just seen, like, a gush of blood go down the... That wouldn't have been that expensive, and then we would have known, but... But yeah, it's he's yeah he's probably dead. He dead, and then nobody ever brings it up ever again, nope. except for them. They kind of go, "You think that guy's dead?" Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, let's and, go watch porn and drink vodka. Because they gotta become men. Yeah. Uh, that's a true. <laughs> that's a test of manhood. Yep. Can you drink vodka? Yeah. Without coke. <laughs> that's true. Uh, so okay, so they've they've killed this guy, and now the sheriff and his buddy leave with the teen girl's parents unconcerned. Yeah. Uh, so oh, we uh, we uh, I forgot my my favorite line from Pons there, where they're when they come out of the bathroom oh and the kids God. are all stumbling. They're like, "What are they doing? Oh, honey, that's called slam that's dancing. Called slam dancing." <laughs> Admittedly, the one actual joke in this thing that I actually laughed yeah. at, I thought that was good. Um, there's also an episode of moshing in the TV show Step by Step, um, and they call it crunch dancing, and I've always loved that. <laughs> <laughs> Frank can't understand, and he keeps getting pissed off because people keep hitting him. He's like, Frank, it's crunch dancing. <laughs> what, I, what I love about that is like it's it's this thing that like every single one of those shows always did, where they were like, oh, you know, I'm drinking a Pepsi. You know, and it's like, you have to have an off-brand version of everything. Yeah. You know, and it's like, you don't, nobody owns a copyright Nobody has a copyright on, on moshing. On <laughs> slam dancing. You can just fucking call it slam dancing. Yeah. It's fine. It's crunch dancing. Why do they do that? <laughs> they just get used to it, I think, <laughs> at a certain point. Yeah. So we've got to make up our own name for everything. <laughs> um, okay, so, turns out that the sheriff and his buddy were actually taking the girls to a strip club. Of course. Of course. That's where you bring... That's girls where you, bring you want to woo. Underage girls that you want to woo. <laughs> I mean, they do get them drunk, so that that's helpful. Yeah. Uh, this is an old. This is a Russ Myers lady. I don't know who she is. Oh, but, is she? But yeah, they were saying that she was a Russ Myers person. Uh, so my buddy Kyle recently gave me a laserdisc player and the, a Russ Myers laserdisc box set. Oh my god! Yeah, super cool. Holy crap, that must be worth a fortune. Uh, I'm not sure. It's worth a lot to me because I like it, so That's thanks insane. so much, Kyle. insane. <laughs> wow, I've never seen such a thing. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Um, Are any of the Russ Myers movies available anywhere? Like, you know, he I, used to be the only person who had the DVDs. I think not. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. And so he's dead, he right? Is. And so I want to say his wife was not letting anybody. I think I read that she wasn't letting anybody do anything with anything. So I don't know. Fascinating. Again, I think I just read that. Don't quote me. Or, or interesting. This is not solid facts. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's super I don't, weird. I don't deliver those a lot here. <laughs> no, nobody does. It's a podcast. We don't. <laughs> we're not supposed to get anything right. Um, that's super weird. Yeah, I've always wondered about that because I remember it was a big deal when Videoport. I got used to them rent them all the time there because yeah. Videoport got them directly from Russ Myers. Oh, yep. And it was one of those things where, like, it was... You were ordering them, like, to get a rental place to have Russ Myers movies was a big deal. Yep. Because, again, you couldn't get them through a distributor or anything else. You literally had to contact him, and he made the DVDs. They were, like, in his garage, and he personally fucking mailed them to you. So, very strange. And they were also, like, I can't remember, like, $75, $100 a piece. Oh, wow. You know, there were yeah. That, I remember they had all the old, they had all, all those price. red clamshell Bosomania tapes at Videoport. There. Yep. Ah, good times. Good times. Uh, okay. Anyway. Anyway, back to uh, whatever they're doing. Um. So, uh, this is that weird scene where the boys come 
uh, and see the girls through the window. Oh, right. They, getting drunk. And they, they run off down the road and they're like having their little moment where they're like, oh my God, did we kill that guy? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Okay, cool. I hope <laughs> nobody comes after us. Let's go warn the girls, I guess, because, I mean, somebody just attacked them in the bathroom and the girls with a cop, like, in any kind of sense, you'd think you'd run in there and be like, officer, this shit just went down. But instead, they just stand outside the window pounding uh, while the cop and his friend walk in slow motion, I guess. <laughs> that, that is, yeah. Okay. This whole scene, uh, again, I know we said we weren't going to say <laughs> it, but can't. it makes no sense. Uh, no, so they're, pou- they're pounding at the window. They're pounding at the window. It's got this really cool montage of the stripper <laughs> and the cop and his friend walking slow-mo back to the table. When all of a sudden, some dude, some rando with an axe starts running at the kids and before he can attack them, Buck Flower shows up and just chops off his fucking head, this- <laughs> which flies through the air, lands on a, a row of spikes, and then one of the girls looks out the window and sees the head on the spikes, and it's smoking a cigarette and winks at her. <laughs> so we don't... <laughs> we don't know why the, who the person with the axe is running at. Was he running at the two guys? He was running at Brent and Larry. He was going to attack. But we we never get a shot that shows them. We never get a two shot. No. It's only oneers for both of them. So we don't know where they are in relation to each yeah. other. It's like woods, guy with axe, those two screaming. They're, they're two screaming Their at the window. backs are turned. Yeah, that guy it just. Was, it was an opportunity right there. We had a shot through the window. You could have had the guy with the axe in the back, and we could have seen him. You could have lit him crazy, because yep. it was a fucking crazy movie. <laughs> but instead, we have no idea where he was. I thought, I, I honestly didn't even know what to think about this guy. And then he loses his head. Yeah. George Buckflower has killed him. We don't know why. We don't know anything. And then he's got a severed head, and he's still alive, but whatever. <laughs> I Fuck. Okay. The girls freak out. Uh, they run outside and hitchhike with a flatbed truck. Okay, is that the scene? Are no, we right no. Or this am I is, jumping? This is, you're jumping. This is much weirder. Um, okay, so uh, they. All right, let me see. They run off through the woods. That's what happens here. And so, like, literally, there's a moment when Roxanne runs ahead. And like leaves her friend behind, <laughs> and she so her friend is like literally calling for her right here. Yep. And then you know Brett puts his hand over oh, her mouth right. okay, and yep. pulls her into the woods and is like, "Shh, there's something weird going on. Ah, oh, they're trying to kill us. Everybody's mm. trying to kill everybody." And then we see George Buck Flower in like a crazy backlit thing up over on the on the hill That's above right. them. Yeah. And they're like, "It's okay. And, he saved us." And then they wake up. Yeah. As though it was a dream. As no, though the whole a, fucking thing was a dream. It's just the next day, bro. It's, it's, okay, sure, it's the next day. <laughs> they are unconcerned about any of it the next day. They got snow to shovel. They have a gross little conversation about Larry's little stiffy. Yeah. Uh, that was fun. Morningwood jokes. That was fun. I liked it. <laughs> Please, they called it his little stiffy. <laughs> Deal with it. Uh, then they go to <laughs> breakfast. Uh they act all sad instead of mentioning the murders to their parents. Um, and then we finally see a full on shot of the guy that looks like the undertaker mixed with Blackie Lawless <laughs> yeah. from Wasp. And turns out his name was actually Blackie. It's Blackie. An- damn it. Blackie. Damn it. Anthony Keat is his dad. Yeah. Who ran the Red Hot Chili Peppers fan club for <laughs> the last 25 years. Oh, did he really? Well, yeah. Until his death. Yeah. He was the, he was the head of the Chili Peppers fan club. It sounds terrible. <laughs> you know, for the first three years they were around, it was super cool. Yeah. <laughs> when they had the Kennedys old drummer, absolutely awesome. Oh, speaking of which, rest in peace. Yeah. That's such a bummer. God damn it. Dead Kennedys drummer died. Hey, everybody dying. Everybody's fucking dying. It's all such a bummer. He was so good. Uh, anyway, uh, but okay, so the Blackie Lawless looking guy meets up with the sheriff and Larry realizes that this is the guy that he saw in the woods with the telescope and somehow he also recognizes Larry. Like, there's a moment when he walks past and Larry's like... Because he's got preacher powers. How did he know me? Preacher power. He's got preacher powers. I mean, they're <laughs> destined to have a showdown. Oh, it's going to be good. <laughs> it's going to be something. Actually, it's going to be very anticlimactic. It sure is. <laughs> uh, the sheriff mentions that there was trouble in town last night, and 
asks the daughter if she's going to be at the dance tonight. Because it's, uh, it's, it's Western night tonight. It is. Putting that polka shit away. And <laughs> she's totally into it. Yeah. What? Yeah, man. It was a dream. No, it wasn't. <laughs> How could it not be? People, but I mean, I guess he met her. He met the, her at the he club. Wouldn't, he, he wouldn't have do, known her otherwise. He didn't do anything bad. The copper didn't do anything bad yet that she knows Yeah, of. but why is she going out if there's fucking crazy people with axes getting beheaded? Because and... where safer would it be than to be with the sheriff? <laughs> She's <laughs> playing it smart, Tristan. Have you been in America lately? <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, okay, so... I've, uh... <laughs> kind of got a little privilege oh nice yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> it's very convenient for you uh she has a similar privilege so that's good uh, i got pulled over by a cop because my headlight was out because it sometimes gets loose because my car is 28 years old and uh i told the cop that and i was like D- can i get out and fix it and he was like oh yeah totally sure <laughs> yeah yeah that's great it's <laughs> nice that he didn't shoot you um okay i so- rolled down my window so he could see me clearly too because if they were up you don't see anything. They're like limo. Did they have one of those tint kits that they were like putting the little thing on it so that he could tell whether your tint was uh, too dark? He did not. Um, have but you yeah, ever had that happen? I have not had that happen, but uh, but my tint is not legal. Jesus Christ. Of course it's not. <laughs> of course it's not. Oh, boy. You kids. On my car that's registered as an antique that I use as a daily driver, <laughs> which is also not legal. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's true. I never <laughs> thought about that. Uh, okay, so... But it's a good thing I'm white and charming. <laughs> <laughs> Title of your autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> Mad Awkward, White and Charming. White and Charming. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, we cut from this scene... These cuts are so... Dr- the other thing about this movie that makes it especially bad for this podcast is that every scene is so drastic. It's not like nothing feels linked together. Mm-hmm. Like, you never feel like you're like, oh, they're at the diner. Now they're back at the hotel for no reason. Like, so now they're sitting on the beds. <clears throat> and so there's a moment where, you know, the dad's like, hey, I need to talk to my son for a minute. And so Larry leaves the room. And What is up with this? <laughs> And then he's like, oh, I got this cold. I can't seem to can't yeah. seem to kick it. And he's like, well, let me tell you. And he just starts doing some dumb spiel about whatever. Just a dad speech. Like a, a dad speech. While his nose is just running like a sieve. And he just starts smearing ultra slime all over yeah. his face. And he's like, his face is all wet. And he's like, ah, uh-huh. it's just, I just can't seem to deal with this, this cold. And, uh, then... and then his ear falls off. <laughs> And then his head just starts pouring blood, but yeah. he's not missing a beat in the conversation. Yeah, he just keeps talking. Well, he keeps getting angrier, though. Like, at the same time, he's like, he's getting, like, he's getting <laughs> And meaner. Brent just stares at him. He doesn't care, care at all, apparently. Like, he, th- yeah, Dad spits out a tooth and, like, all this other <laughs> shit. And Brent's, like, clearly having a massive hallucination. And he's like, yep, whatever. Mm. I've seen it all before. <laughs> Did they say anything about this on the commentary? Of, nope. Of what? Of fuck. All, that was the thing, is that they were like, this is a perfect example of how the commentary worked. Where this scene that is bonkers and from out of nowhere and means nothing in the rest of the film, yeah. they're like, yeah, I wish they had more blood. <laughs> I had a friend... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend who was a big Blue Velvet fan, had a, had a fake prop ear from that. Uh, I borrowed that, so it made his ear fall off. And... But, but why? <laughs> why is any of this happening? Um, okay, so they skip over the murders and hallucinations, and just he and Brent, did, Larry and Brent, go out and shovel the driveway. And for some reason, they have to do this, and so they get into a fight about whether hellacious is a word. <laughs> Larry again loses his fucking mind and starts <laughs> trying to beat Brent to death with his shovel. Yeah. And this is just like played off as though it is like a playful fun thing and where Brent has like a uh, one of those like plow shovels. Yeah. What Larry has it's is a murder a, shovel. It's a spade shovel. He's got one of those. <laughs> it's a like, murder shovel. It's a murder shovel. It is 100% like it's the one that fucking <laughs> Bruce Campbell cut his his girlfriend's head off with yep. in Evil Dead. It is a murder shovel. 
If you bonk somebody with that, they will die. If you bonk somebody with the other shovel, they will laugh. It is not something you could kill someone with. It's the same kind of shovel that I have that I buried my buddy Ivan with in our wrestling video that you should check out <laughs> on the Video Vagrants YouTube channel. This uh, has been a paid promotion. Nice. Uh, oh, my God. This is so crazy. Okay. Um, and so... Yeah, they get the sword fight. George... Oh, that's right. The rambunctious fighting it aggravates George Buck Flowers. He hates noise. Brain He's like, Please problems. Please stop the noise. And... and this is when George tells his story about how they tried to. We we learned earlier that his his wife and his two kids and dog all died in a car accident with him, and he's got a metal plate in it. But we find out now through this weird ass slow motion home video. Segment, this is where we learn that they had run out of uh, movie. <laughs> and that they needed to extend the movie to feature length with something. <laughs> yeah. So if we just put a filter on our camcorder footage from, from yeah, yeah, a tape, blank tape we bought at CVS, we should be fine. It's uh, great. So, like, you don't even have to use more actual film. You can film this camcorder yep. thing. Pretty smart. Because I, whenever I reminisce, it's in video. <laughs> it's, well, okay. All my memories look shot on video to me. This is what I think is interesting about this is that it's it's one of those scenes in a movie where if you've never seen movies before, this feels weird. Like it relies entirely on you knowing the cliches of movies mm -hmm. because this is the cliche in an action movie where the divorced cop yeah who is like the, he's like sitting on his couch and he's got a bottle of jack daniels and he's watching the video of his ex-wife you know from their their marriage and whatever and it fell apart because he couldn't handle the job and all that stuff and so his kids are like dad tj lasers on yeah exactly it's it's that <laughs> and except we're just seeing this as though there was camcorder footage being shot by george <laughs> buck flower yes and then he witnesses the murders and he drops the camera because it's on its side. I love that shot, though. It's pretty good. Yeah. It, that part is good. And it's also, it's got his, another movie that he worked on so they could use, they were watching it on TV yeah. outside. Monster food. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, the lines from it were crazy. <laughs> yeah. You can't have things that are that much more interesting than the movie that you're shooting. He's like, it was super monster distracting. food. Monster food. You know, all of those genetic experiments and yeah. all the animal parts in jars. <laughs> and I was listening to that being like, oh, is this, an, is, oh, is this important to the plot? This will be good. Oh, no, it's just a movie that's playing. I got to say, I was like, oh, monsters. Yeah. Okay, okay, now you got my interest movie. Yeah, I want to know more about monster food. Fuck, no, <laughs> none of that. What do monsters eat? What do monsters... Apparently, they eat uh, animal parts that are preserved in jars. Neat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's neat eats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we find out that George Buck Flowers' whole family got killed. Yeah, and, and my he got left are no help. And he got left for dead. And uh, he tells all the kids that, that this place isn't safe. They yep. killed... You know, and that's what I, that's what I'm gathering from it that kids aren't allowed here. Yep. And he tried no, that buck, is true. he tried no pun intended, bucking that trend. Oh, look at you. Uh yep. But immediately after telling this story, he gets shot by yes. somebody in the woods. Buck says, They are going to kill your family and I can prove <laughs> it. Come with me. You should come with me. And they're kinda hesitant to come with him. And a rifle shot rings out from some weirdo in the woods. And the reaction of everyone here is it, It's like, like they've seen it all. <laughs> they, these guys do not fucking care. Somebody shooting at you and just killed somebody and the they kids don't, don't care. The dad is right there with his metal detector and, he, and all of a sudden he's like, Hey kids, I found, I found a, quarter. a quarter and they're all like, Okay, let's bury this guy. But no, let's not actually bury him. Let's just cover him in fucking snow and call it a day. And they do. Yep. And so they just bury George Buck Flower. And then they're like, oh, it feels weird. We should have a tombstone or something. Oh, here's his dead stuffed dog. We'll just use that. <laughs> Boop. They'll find him in the spring. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what they say. I don't, by all means, don't go tell your parents or the <laughs> sheriff that somebody just got shot right in front of you. Yep. Okay. So now, after all of this nonsense, 
the girls are back out and walking in the woods by themselves <laughs> after all the shit has happened because either nothing that we saw the previous few nights has actually happened it or all they're happened. incredibly stupid or this movie sucks. One of the, one of these things. It's a mix of B and C. Okay. So <laughs> they, they go to the graveyard to, you know, to make snow angels. Yeah. Like you do. And they're making snow angels. And, ah, there's a body. Just kidding. It's a baby doll. <laughs> it's um, the dumbest scare. Yes. And uh, talk. speaking of using every part of the animal, here's the fucking baby doll from the from scene the car. before. Yeah. It's, <laughs> wow, impressive. <laughs> uh, I, I was wondering if this was supposed to be a real thing that they saw. And then they were like, oh, we can't make this look good. There's no way to make this look right. Oh, like they it's found like, an actual baby? Yeah, yeah. Like they were supposed to have found an actual baby or something. Maybe they've used up all of their baby murdering in the beginning. <laughs> um, but like, whatever. Yeah, that's enough baby murder for <laughs> maybe, one movie. Maybe, maybe, maybe. We're going to have him eat his baby later on. Let's <laughs> let's just make this part of dumb. Let's, let's back it down with the infanticide, <laughs> maybe. Like, <laughs> you're at like an 11. <laughs> maybe back it down to like a 5. <laughs> on the... Uh, I'm a dead baby meter. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. Uh, so, back with the boys. Uh, I don't. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, oh, that was when he just says. Oh, he says that. Oh, I'm just rehashing the part where he says, "I found a quarter." Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's just that I'm seeing. Okay, so the two idiot girls, after being totally scared of this thing in the cemetery. <laughs> On the on the grave of George Buckflower's family, by the way. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it, Ed, his name is Ed Simpson, right? I, I don't recall. Something like that. Uh, so the two idiot girls go, they hear some spooky singing. And they're like, That's right. It's so beautiful. We should follow it. And so they do. And they see some dangerous loner's trailer home. And they're like, Gotta go check this out. <laughs> Something's cooking and it smells good. Maybe we'll ask these strangers to eat their food. Because now I guess we're 1920s hobos in a fucking cartoon? Yes. Like, <laughs> they're like drifting to the smell of pie and their feet are off the ground. They all of a sudden have polka dot <laughs> handkerchief <Yes>. stick bags. <laughs> they're, they're carrying bindles and they're like, they're going to go steal a pie off this. <laughs> but no, actually what they're smelling is the delicious smell of cooking baby. Oh, and there's the uh, there's it's, that. It's a wholesome movie. And the couple uh, are feeding each other cooked baby while the guy's fondling the wife's enormous boobs. He just won't let those things alone. I mean, they're they're impressive. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Uh, but uh, yeah, but he is he might be a little obsessed. <laughs> so um, the girls see this and they see the blood pouring out of the driver's side of the station wagon, and they're like. Like, should we should we quietly get away? I got a better idea. <laughs> let's scream loudly let's scream, and run. Run and then go hitchhike with some creeper driving a truck. Find a hay truck and just get in that. They got in damn it's truck. They got in the truck with a guy dressed like the undertaker. Yes. What the fuck, man? That is a bad decision. But <laughs> out of the frying pan into the microwave. Yeah, this is so not not a good idea. Um, so in another one of these cuts that's in this movie where we don't know what happened and don't know how we got to where we are, the boys are now driving a truck that belongs to no one we know. That's Buck Flower's truck. So they stole his truck? Well, you can't steal it. He's dead. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. It's so, Finder's Keeper's truck. Okay, now. so they took, they took his truck and they wound up going back to the hotel. Um... The girls are on the back of this truck. This whole scene is weird. And they are laughing and joking just about their a grand old shoes, time. just having a party. Peeing their pants. They have seen they have seen some Texas chainsaw level shit go down here. It's you freezing know what? outside. There's shit that they've seen that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre would not have dared to put in their movie. <laughs> And they are like, ah, <laughs> my shoes are dirty. Remember that time I peed my pants? Okay, I'm going to take a nap now. <sighs> yep. They take a nap. 
They do. I mean, it exhausts you seeing that type of horror. They don't. How long were they sleeping and riding in this truck? This town's small, and they yeah. didn't leave it. Yeah, I have no idea. Maybe they walked like 20 miles in the woods. Yeah. But, but then we get this, now we get a dream. Oh, well, before, I mean, whatever. The, this yeah. is the this is the part where we actually get the discussion of what the whole fucking movie's about. Uh, Brett and Larry are back at the back oh, at yeah. their, their uh, hotel room, and they're drinking straight vodka and watching porn. And Larry basically is like, uh, they have they have a couple of dumb things. There's there's a line where somebody misses a line or says an extra line that wasn't in there, and it got really confusing. <laughs> he's like, he's like, what does it take to be a to be a grown woman? And then he's like, do you have any coke for this? And then he says, that's a very interesting question that you bring up. And then he's he goes he skips over the coke question and moves directly to the one prior to it. Doesn't address the coke question at all. I thought he was referencing the coke question. Like no, this was the the interesting question was about what makes a when do you become an adult? Ah, uh, okay. And the idea is that they're now drinking straight vodka, they're smoking cigarettes, they're watching porn, they're trying to act like adults because he reveals this dumb pamphlet that doesn't really say exactly what they're saying well enough for the audience to really get it, but it really does. It's it's a thinking man's movie. I got it. <laughs> sure is. I mean, I did get it eventually what they were saying, but it's uh, from the other things. That pamphlet does not give anything away. I mean, it's so vague, but... Uh, but he's saying that if they grow up and become adults and act like adults, they won't be killed because they they're be not killed. kids. Yeah. It's a good plan. Okay. Absolutely. Hear me out. What if they didn't just imitate other people and try to steal the identities of existing people in this town? <laughs> That's what makes it fun. <laughs> and I love. I mean, one of my favorite parts is that the 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 brother, the Brett, his the character that he steals later on, not to go way ahead, he steals the sheriff's character. But instead of being the sheriff, he he's, dresses he's like, like a, a man with no name. <laughs> yes. He's got a poncho on and he's got like a little mustache that he's drawn <laughs> on with eyeliner. And yeah. he's like an old Western movie sheriff. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, he's just he's just Clint Eastwood from, you know, one of those movies. Uh, but yes, That was an adult. I mean, he was an adult in those movies. You're not wrong. <laughs> okay, so uh, they hear some moaning coming from the next door, and Larry's like, I gotta go check this out. And so he breaks in using magic lockpicking skills that he's developed from a lifetime of, of crime. Cat, cat burglary. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, and... <laughs> He, they find the room completely unoccupied, and they're looking around, and then they go into the bathroom, and, ah, there's a woman tied up to the shower. And so Larry's like, you got to come see this. There's this girl tied up to the shower. Okay, this, this is one of the most confusing parts of this movie for okay. me. What happens here? Uh, yeah, there's some weird, like, Larry ends up getting alone in the bathroom because that room is the Undertaker's room. Right. Who has dropped off the girls somewhere Okay, and has returned to the hotel without them, and he goes into the room. For some reason, Brent's gone. Larry's in the room. Did he? Did Larry go back to their room? I mean, did Brent go back to their hotel room to get a knife to cut her down? Is that what happened? That would make sense. But, okay, so the Undertaker <laughs> arrives yeah. with the two girls. They get out of the... They get out of the car, and then magically, it's we're back in the hotel room that belongs to the family, and the two girls are with Brent. Yeah, and Larry's alone in the bathtub, laying down. Yes, the Undertaker doesn't see him there, and kills the woman tied to the tied to the drain pipe. In this, yes. Uh, so yeah, you're not wrong. There, there's definitely something missing in this. There's scene. something going on. Oh yeah, but uh, I love. That scene, like that, it's intense. Larry, Larry, Larry huddling, trying to hide. The Undertaker just comes in, opens a curtain, stabs the girl in the side. Yeah, chops her down, and she, her dead, bleeding body just falls on top of. Yep, Larry. on top of Larry. So we can have this 
joke that should have been funny, but Larry's <sighs> delivery just falls flat. So all of a sudden, Larry comes bursting back into the room. They did this like dramatic camera shot, but like, it, it don't all, worry, it's not my don't blood. Don't worry, it's not my blood. <laughs> but it all falls flat because, like you said, you don't know why he's in there. And then when he before he comes in, they do this this like super zoom that like yeah, you're like what like. It would make more sense if, like, they were in the room and it's like, oh, man, I hope Larry's all right. Then he comes in. You know, we don't get any buildup to that. We just have Larry pop in in this weird way and, and do that line. And it's just, it's not a good take. But like you said, right. if they only shot everything twice, that he only had two you shots to take it. He may have yeah. pulled a boner on both takes. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it, it's crazy. But it... Uh, it's a to funny me, line in concept too. It should work. Like, well, to me, the thing that doesn't work about this is that this is a. I was gonna say it's a comedy Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but that does work when you make it the way that Texas Chainsaw Two mm-hmm. was. Yes. that movie works. But Perfect this this movie. movie is so horrific when it's horror. It's it's mm-hmm. literally addressing some of the worst things that you will ever see in a horror movie. In, like, a funny throwaway teen romp. Mm -hmm. It's like a boobs and dumb shit movie (laughs) with infanticide and a woman who's tied up in saran wrap being, like, cut with a knife. Yeah. And the saran wrap fills with blood as her lifeless body falls into the tub. It's heavy. It's like, that is dark, dark shit. Yeah. Like, this is not a playful horror movie. But it is, it, which makes it all that much more deranged to me. Like, it's somehow, like, double sleazy because <laughs> it is addressing these things as though they could be funny. And I'm somebody who can laugh at a fucking horror movie. <laughs> Clearly, we literally have spent 150 episodes laughing at people dying in yeah. horror movies. We're but good at it. It's, it. We're getting good at it. I think at this point. We're, <laughs> oh. Um. But yeah, and it's all. And it also solidifies Larry's uh, psychopath this more. Right. When 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 he was just covered with a dead bleeding woman on there, and when he comes back into the room, the first thing he does is crack a joke. And <laughs> and that was not a that was not a kid. That wasn't a teen. That was an adult woman. I I think Why it was a teen. Why is she dead? I think oh. it was a teen, just like them. Okay. Maybe that's it. Maybe we're. Maybe we can assume that. Yeah. Did you know that? <laughs> okay, there's a crazy story about one of these actresses. I don't know which one it was, but one of the funniest things in the commentary. Not to just go back to the commentary, yep. but this was an actually good story. Um, one of them went to work on a TV show. I can't remember which one. But she like there were all sorts of articles written about her because she was the youngest writer to ever be on a TV show. And she was 17 years old and she was working for this show. And it was like a major network show that ran for tons of years. She worked on the show for a really long Mm -hmm. time. And then somebody eventually found out that she was 32 and that she had lied about being 17 (laughs) and that she just has like a kid face. And so she had gotten away with pretending to be 17 this whole time, and she got totally blacklisted, and it was a whole gigantic scandal. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Which is really... And the director even was like, this is insane. I mean, there was a fucking movie with Clint Eastwood where he was like <laughs> 175 years old and dating a 40-year-old woman. It's like, and we're we're supposed to be okay with that, but this woman <laughs> can't lie about her age? Yeah. Fuck that. Reminds me of uh, maybe in uh, Arrested Development. Yeah. When she picked up that job. Exactly. <laughs> Marry me. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, back in the uh, back in the hay truck, this is where we get our low budget Hellraiser thing going on. We get the. <laughs> this is the only dream in the movie. Okay, this is this is definitely a dream. Oh because yeah. Because there's magic going on here, and there's no magic in the rest of the movie. No. Uh, so. Chains, or is there? <laughs> I mean. There probably is. Uh, chains come to life and bind them in a reverse shot. So it's like, whir, whir, whir. Mm. they're like wrapping around their legs. And they're like, oh no, they start getting held down by ghost hands. And then they wake up. Ah, it was all a dream. So that was weird. Uh, okay, so let's see. 
This is when oh, this is when he literally says, "We need to grow up and conform." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we need to join adult society because the, they're well, with the girls and they're like having this. They're conversation in the hotel room. Yeah, to... it also starts with Larry singing Figaro for some reason. No idea. <laughs> adults, adults love Mozart. Yeah, it just cuts to the scene and Larry's just like. Figaro, Figaro, Figaro. And they're like, uh, no, you're trying to figure out what to do. Like, I know you've been accused of not being serious before, like in the bathroom, and he was like, calling him Kimosabi. But like, man, who who is singing Figaro when you're trying to plot how to survive after you've seen some shit? Also, it gets the fucking joke wrong. <laughs> Who's that Kimosabi? No, it's fucking White Man. The joke was about Tonto <laughs> being surrounded by people from fucking... Yes. Yeah. Fucking Larry. Larry, get the fucking joke right. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, so... Okay, what's the thing? Um, so, yeah, they decide that they're going right. to join the adults, fit into the society, and they won't be killed. And, so, and that's when we get our big reveal. So there's the big country western dance that night, and we get the reveal of all of our new adult children, and they are fucking hilarious. Yes. Uh <laughs> The the ladies have gussied themselves up to look like ridiculous, like old lady country western bar hags. Yep, and it's that's pretty funny. And Brent's the man with no name, like you said. Yeah, Brent's the man with no name, and Larry is dressed as the Undertaker. He's dressed he, just like the other preacher. I mean, I guess maybe he snuck in his room and stole his. I think, second wardrobe? I think that's what we're supposed to assume. I think yep. because they, they look in his in his suitcase and they're like, ah, this gives me an idea. Oh, uh, okay. I guess. Who is this guy? Why does he have a suitcase? Doesn't he live in the town? Isn't that the whole point that everybody lives the fuck down? <laughs> <laughs> why am I trying to? <laughs> Thank you. Why am I doing this? <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is the, literally the worst episode we've ever done. You picked it. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. Uh, once and I, I love it. Once I'd gotten halfway through it, I was like, oh, this is going to make for a bad one. <laughs> um, okay. I'm let- having a fine time. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. I hope you are all are there t- are too. Yes. If you actually made it through this episode, listen, and, uh, tell us. Anyway. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> the- so they, <laughs> they play along in the way that Brett decides to go on stage with the band because they say that they'd been waiting for him. I guess. Uh, this just this just worked out for Brett because yeah. he shows up with his guitar. I the guess. guy who was supposed <laughs> to play guitar wasn't there. I guess. And maybe he was the guy that got his head chopped off. Maybe, maybe that's it. Whatever, doesn't matter. So they go in and they start playing. Uh <laughs> Yep. Play that loop for the next five minutes yeah. straight. <laughs> it's a it's a very long scene of just that. And Brett blows his cover, unfortunately, here. He, because he McFlies himself, dude. He really does. He slaps on an overdrive pedal and somehow like does the laziest Eddie Van Halen impersonation. He even ever. does the f- he does finger tapping. Pretty pretty weak finger tapping. No, it's awesome. I, I mean I mean it's awesome. And <laughs> people start leaving because they can't stand that Heck, rock and oh, roll sound. What is this? What is this horrible music? Uh, that's another part of this movie. I, I love a movie that goes out of its way to establish that the music that's being played is awful and stupid. And then they're like, only horrible squares and dumb people would listen to this music. How about we make you listen to it for a half hour? (laughs) You know how irritating it is? There you go, audience. It's for you. This movie has a mixed bag with the music. Some of it's really great. Yeah, yeah. There's I mean, some that I love, but this <laughs> this this track goes on way too long. Way too long with yeah. the same loop. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Larry's now having a standoff with the other preacher, and they're being creepy and swigging whiskey at each other like they're passing up. The <laughs> it's, it's Larry's proven that he's an adult. Yeah. Yeah. They're passing a pint of whiskey back and forth. And he accepts an offer to go visit the church of the preacher, who is the preacher of the church, but also has a suitcase in a hotel. Yeah. That's where he goes to kill people. He has his own house. Probably. That's probably it. He's a preacher. Uh, he 
of course pulls a knife on on Larry and uh we see that he acts a lot like Jack Black in this which is kind of great. His his acting style is very Jack Black-esque. Uh the dialogue here with Larry's fantastic though. Because earlier when he pulls out his knife and he flips it around, he 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 says motherfucker a lot. Yeah. And this one he's like I'm going to cut you mother superior. Yes. <laughs> and then when the Undertaker goes to attack, he's like, "Oh, holy shepherd." <laughs> <laughs> this is all... This... I, I, I like puns, and they're dumb, and it's funny. So, evidently, the reason is they were confronted by the people in the town who were very upset about the swearing in the church. Oh, seriously? And they had to go and ADR over... They made them ADR lines. Oh, so... Where, he... So he was not swearing in the church. Ah. Huh? Yeah. And that made God happy. And God forgave them and did not smite the town <laughs> even though the time the town is completely empty and was already pretty much been smited where where was this shot i don't remember what they i don't remember them saying like the actual town but like basically they they had the run of the entire town they could shoot anywhere they wanted as long as they put their uh put everybody up in like the mayor's fucking log cabins that they paid for <laughs> so it was yeah neat it was weird but, uh, so, they tussle, whatever, and Larry winds up stabbing the preacher in the back. And he leaves his knife behind, because he's done with his part of this. Yep. He's never going to need that again. He was going to leave his knife in the dead body. That should never cause him any problems. <laughs> um, and then, it's my favorite shot of the movie. Uh, Larry walking down the church steps after taking out Undertaker. Yeah. Along with the music, because at this point, we're not doing that dumb loop anymore. We've nope. we've We've... Uh, we're in the really cool piece of music here, I feel. Yes. like yep, It's like an intense, cool bluegrass, like, <laughs> mysterious track. Yep. With Yeah, and that shot of just Larry after killing him, walking out the steps, along with that music. Yeah, yeah. Perfection. Like, no, it's damn, great. I love it. Yeah, there's there's some great shots in this movie. Um, it, I mean, they were up against it for time, for budget, for everything. Like, I do not hold it against anybody. I don't think that anyone was incompetent in making this movie. No. Clearly, there no one was. It's just that what is on screen is confusing. Especially so, in the sun scene, too. Like, yeah. So what happens now? The girls are both in guys' cars making so, out? Yeah, so their, their version of this, their whole thing... It's so It doesn't make sense, because, like, Larry fights the preacher who he's dressed like but then uh brent is taken on this school marm lady who's yeah. running the barn dance millie and the two of the two girls are taken on the 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 sheriff and his deputy with sex with sex uh so well one of them <laughs> yeah one of them's a tease and, and kills him the other one's just like fuck it i'm gonna fuck <laughs> yeah because the whole thing was that they needed boobs, and so they finally were like, this is the only way we're going to get it. Mm. And so they did this shot, which was... Gratuitous. Point. It was gratuitous. It yeah. really was. It's it's weird, but it's, yeah, it's super gratuitous. So um, they did it, uh, but she winds up just having sex with him instead of killing him, right? As far as I know. Yeah, yeah. Because he gets taken out... Off screen. Off screen in the end in a scene that makes no sense. And, I, and yeah. again, I wonder if it's a missing scene. Yeah, that's... that. It so, yeah, one, like one, one girl leads the guy on, then says, like, okay, I'm going to do it. I just need to put makeup on first. And then pulls out a 12-gauge and just blows his head off in the like car. Like a massive, like, Mossberg. <laughs> yeah. Like... I don't know where she was hiding that. <laughs> <laughs> like, under her skirt. She just, like, pulls the shotgun. <laughs> And it's great because he's like he's like pushing himself on her, and she's like, "Hold on, just wait a minute." Yep. And then she just blows his fucking head off. Love it. It was great. And apparently that was that was a great scene too because they just basically threw glass out the window <laughs> <laughs> to approximate the idea of a shotgun. Blowing it worked, out. and it looked great. Yeah, looks fine to me. Uh, so there it is. Uh, uh, everybody's dead, and then we go. We cut to. What could be twenty years later? It's just a month next, later. It's just the next day. It's not just the next it's day. It's just the next day, bro. Wow. Their parents leave. A lot of snow melted in that time. It's weird yeah, that it's now spring. It's a weird town. Uh, but no, they're 
their parents are leaving. They were just up there for the week, as far as I knew. Yep, the parents. The take parents off. are leaving, and then it, it goes. It's the same shot of them driving away. You see the kids go to the restaurant. So yeah, it's the same. It's just the next. Yep. It's the next day, or it's within a week. Yeah, yeah. Either way, it, the, <laughs> the the big twist ending is that the kids have taken over the roles of the people that they killed. Yep. So, well, sort of. I mean, he's the, Brett's the sheriff. He comes in, does the whole same shtick that the old sheriff did. And the says sheriff. Says the same lines. The sheriff dies, like, they meet up at the restaurant, and some one of them, Larry or Brent, asks, like, what about Sam, who was the sheriff? And she says something like, oh, that should be taken care of right about, and you hear this explosion. Now, like, as if they blew up the sheriff, but, yeah. like. All she did was have sex with the sheriff. They like, just forgot she, about was it. Was she planting a car bomb during yeah. that? Like <laughs> in his penis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. It's so weird. <laughs> yeah, it's it's bad, is what it is. Uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you think they really forgot? Like, <laughs> I think they forgot. I think that literally they were like they were so obsessed with getting this girl naked that they were like that was all they were thinking about, and they were like, oh shit. She was supposed to kill him in that scene, and all we wanted to do was see her <laughs> naked, so. Let's pretend she planted a time bomb. Because, <laughs> you know, kids have time bombs. Yeah, they do, <laughs> so that's fine. But there it is. Uh, yeah, he's the sheriff now, and Larry is revealed to be the, the preacher. preacher. So he's got great. The, he's got the full wig. He's got the really fake-looking wig, and he's, again, Effing dressed like... It. The, Love it. The World Wrestling Federation's Undertaker. He is... It is ridiculous. I mean, even at this time, like, The Undertaker was a character when this movie was made. Like, he is just dressed like The Undertaker. Wow. 88? But I think so. I that guy's, like, he, a, that guy's like 170 years old. I didn't old. think he came along to the 90s, but I don't... Maybe he did. Maybe. I wouldn't... I, unfortunately, am not a did wrestling Did Undertaker fan. talk? Or did only Paul Bearer? I think Paul Bearer was the one that talked. I don't think I don't think I've ever seen him talk. Yeah, I can't recall. I'm not a big wrestling guy either, so. Nope. Hmm. Sorry. Unimportant. Uh, <laughs> our wrestling podcast is gonna be really uneventful when we start <laughs> it. <laughs> Who's that guy? I don't know. He's gold underwear. <laughs> yes, I know that guy. Oh, uh, oh yes. Is is that the one that was race baiting, or is that the one that was gay baiting? I can't remember which character it was. That is unfair because that is old WWE. Yes. That is not the way that things are now. They have they have definitely remedied a lot of those problems. A lot of the like really gross stuff that was really sad about it that made me very anti wrestling when I was younger is is kind of gone. Oh, good. And so uh, there's lots of fun people out there and lots of fun independent wrestlers. So that's the takeaway from this movie. Wrestling wrestling's great now. Wrestling's good now. <laughs> Stay tuned for the Fun Box Wrestling Podcast. Yeah, go watch AWE. <laughs> Support Danhausen by his t-shirts. <laughs> He's a nice fella. Hey, you had him here at the shop. What is this place anyway? Coast City Comics, home of your comics and your Coast City. Wow, do they have a website? www.coastcitycomics.com. Can you get a Fun Box Monster Podcast t-shirt? You can. Neat. Nice. You should do that. This and, has been a paid uh, promotion. Yes, it sure has. Uh, and uh, you can follow us at Coast City Comics and at Funbox Monster Podcast. And I am Matt Awkward, VHS Fiend. And make sure you check out the Video Vagrants group on Facebook and the Video Vagrants YouTube channel. Yes, and rate and review us wherever Speaking you can. Speaking of wrestling, you can watch my wrestling match where I kill Ivan on the Video Vagrants YouTube channel. Finally, the somebody baptism does. Baptism of Blood to Cemetery Throwdown. <laughs> Finally. That's uh, good stuff. It's fun see and it, free. See, it all ties in. There was yeah. a wrestling thing. Yeah. This this thing's like intricate Swiss clockwork, this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, rate and review us. Uh, say nice say things. Say nice things. And, uh, nice people. And we'll see you next time. Yeah. On The Muppet Show. <laughs> Good night. Peace. <laughs>